Hello everyone and welcome to this next video looking at Stockfish's opening repertoire. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this video we are having a look at 1E4 E5. So we already know that Stockfish's preferred move is knight f3 um, and then knight c6, bishop b5, knight f6 and we're into the Berlin. But there's plenty of other stuff to uh, look at here as well. So how about knight f3, knight f6? What does Stockfish want? Well, actually, just like Coivisto, uh, Stockfish gives the seal of approval to a line that cropped up in the uh, um, World Championship between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomniachtchi, maybe Magnus Carlsen's last ever World Championship. Um, it was this line, which was quite, uh, quite interesting. It was... Uh, um, basically going for uh, an ending and claiming that the uh, resulting pawn structure was going to be quite good. Now a4 was played by uh, by Magnus, queen b5, a, b and now then a5, knight h4, g6 and these were excellent moves by uh, by Jan, uh, absolutely the best moves and basically neutralized um, what Magnus was trying to do. Um, Stockfish likes uh, rook b1 rather than a4, um, rook d8, g3, Queen takes, takes, knight a6, bishop d2, knight c7, rook b2, b5, and uh, claims a slight advantage, 0.46, but, um, well, there was a very big, uh, uh, well, high-level correspondence game in 2021 uh, that, well, the black held the draw quite easily, and, um, well, this looks, you know, pretty much like, uh, like a draw to me as well. Petrov is a tough nut to crack. Um, but just interesting to see that, um, that now that Stockfish's uh, best line was the line that uh, Magnus chose in the, uh, in the World Championship. So after knight f3, knight c6, well, bishop b5 is uh, the main line, of course, but there's a lot of other interesting stuff, and that's mainly bishop c4, so let's have a look at it. So after bishop c4, knight f6 is uh, Stockfish's main move after more than uh, um, a million, million nodes of, uh, of analysis. Um, and then d3. I mean, knight g5 is just never uh, a popular choice with the engine, not because of the Traxler with bishop c5, but because of d5 and knight a5. And, um, well, we're seeing these lines, uh, this sort of line prop, prop up very often in, uh, in engine lines. Again, it's um, um, what alpha zero uh, played against uh, Stockfish 8 as black. So it's another one of those lines that... Um, well, that Alpha Zero seems to have got right, you know, according to all the other engines. Rook E1, C5, and we just, uh, you know, Black's willing to sacrifice even that E5 pawn, but uh, just get open lines for the diagonal. And uh, well, with C6 to C5, this knight, which was really Black's worst piece, coming back into play. And uh, B3, F6, Bishop A3, Knight B7, Knight E4, Bishop B7, B4, Queen D3, Rook E3, Queen D5 takes knight takes and um well eventually we're going to get to uh, some sort of uh, equality um so yeah nothing uh, too amazing there really but um uh yeah i mean again a confirmation that uh, this move knight g5 and that this old fashioned uh, modern line knight a5 d5 and knight a5 is um yeah is just uh, enough for black to uh, to hold there so d3 the slow italian is what uh, all the engines want and then bishop c5, castles, castles, knight c3. Amazingly enough from, uh, from Stockfish. This is really old fashioned. Not even playing a, a c3 or a, a system or, you know, trying to expand with b4 on the queen side. Just this old stuff. Um, doesn't look like very much to me. There was a game, uh, though, to Parlov against Tarry, Stavanger 2022, where uh, white won. Um, and uh, also this was also played in Aronian against Rajabov uh, in 2021 as well. So, yeah, it's clearly a serious line. But um, bishop b6, b3, one of those funny moves, just uh, aiming to meet uh, bishop takes c4 with b takes c4. Just keeping the, um, uh, yeah, you know, a, a compact center basically and a whole grip on the, uh, on the black center. So knight a5 and now Aronian went queen e1, uh, but bishop b6. And d4 is uh, Stockfish's idea. Only a 0.08 advantage, but a little bit of, a, of an initiative. Um, rook f7, rook e1, knight e2, and queen c4, and then looking for b4. Yeah, it's all quite subtle, really. Um, it's, um, yeah, you know, not really clear that it leads to any great advantage. But obviously, there's a lot more play in there than you might think. And, uh, yeah, as I said, I was quite shocked when I saw uh, knight c3 there. I just 
looks uh, you know very old fashioned and well it's what uh, you know one of the first openings you learn to play as a kid really so uh, funny to see to see 3600 engines just uh, ping it, picking it up like that maybe slightly more excitingly is um uh, instead of uh, the move uh, bishop c4 knight f6 d3 it's the move uh, d4 uh, the reason i had a look at this was uh, i really got into uh, gawain jones's excellent uh, coffee house repertoire volume 2 and uh, Gawain does a huge amount of analysis on there. Really, really amazing standard. I can thoroughly recommend this book to uh, to anyone, really. Um, but um, yeah, so he takes a look at, uh, at these lines, which I always considered to be uh, really nothing at all for white. But, you know, Gawain makes an amazingly convincing case for uh, all sorts of dangers in the black position. So knight d4, bishop d7, takes, takes castles, bishop c5, all known. Uh, yeah, also games, you know, from uh, the previous... Uh, uh well you know 19th century uh, uh early 20th century in uh, in this f4 knight e4 bishop b3 and then queen b8 is um uh stockfish's idea and uh here actually uh, um well there's a previous game adiban against ganguly 2021 where adiban played b3 surprisingly a restrained move there um Gawain suggests a pawn sacrifice with knight c3, which is very interesting. Stockfish recommends a pawn sacrifice with queen d3 and knight here. And, you know, the idea essentially, a3, threatening rook b1 to trap the queen, always in, the, in these variations is that you double up black's uh, c pawns, and then you just aim to uh, get a knight onto c5, and you claim, you know, compensation. Um, looks sufficient compensation, but uh, actually Stockfish thinks that uh, the best line here is the draw by repetition. But um, but pretty interesting there, and also interesting to see that uh, Gawain is suggesting something that isn't Stockfish's main line. So yeah, still a surprise weapon, I think, for uh, for your games. Um, now, I mean, apart from knight f6, knight f6 is always the engine's main choice, but, um, you know, bishop c5 is, um, is also uh, possible. And here, once again, I had a look at what Gawain was, uh, was recommending, uh, you know, this quick Sicilian, not d3, but quick um, Italian, rather, not, um, not uh, playing d3, but d4 as well. And this has uh, become a very topical line at, uh, at the top level. And, uh, well, bishop b6 is what uh, Gawain spends most of his time on, it's the most popular move. Um, and actually, uh, Stockfish uh, has that as its main move for quite a long time. But um, uh, eventually, we get to this line, bishop d2 and bishop b7, which also gets a brief mention in Gawain's book. Um, knight c3 is uh, um, Gawain's main line. Bishop b3 is Stockfish's line. And then a6, bishop b2, f5, takes, knight takes. Some surprising moves for me there. But um, uh, yeah, Stockfish considers this to be um, approximately uh, um, equal. But um, yeah, you know, still uh, some reasonable amounts of play there. I mean, um, the pawn structure is quite unbalanced. Uh, Black's got some sort of uh, possible counterplay on the F file, but White's got this lovely outpost on E5, which, well, he's, White's more likely to be able to use the E5 outpost than Black the E4 outpost because White's got this move F2 to F3. And um, yeah, Rook E1, Queen D7, Bishop H4, pretty typical idea. You just want to swap off the dark when bishops get onto E5. It's balanced, but uh, but complicated, you know, and uh, so, um, yeah, still definitely a very interesting line there. But uh, interesting that Stockfish wants this unusual response, check, bishop d2, bishop e7. Uh, the check with bishop b4, it's the standard thing we see it in the Queen's Indian and Catalan as well. You know, you bring the bishop to d2 where it's not necessarily on its uh, best place, because uh, in this case, you, you might want to, uh, to play a move like knight d2, for example, to challenge the knight on e4. And then the final little thing, bishop b5. Just imagine the Berlin with knight f6 didn't exist. How about a6? And uh, once again, um, uh, Stockfish as well, just like um, uh, Coivisto, um, wants uh, h3 anti martial And uh, well, we get d3, d5 takes, um, knight takes c5. a4 was played by Nakamura against Ronin in a recent game, Berlin 2022. But knight takes c5, knight d4, knight c3. I mean, these lines were seen, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, uh, Carlson Karyakin uh, World Championship matches. And um, yeah, you know, again, it's just um, uh, these types of positions that engines are, <coughs> pardon me, very happy to go for. Uh, blacks are pawned down, but um, uh, two bishops, open center, plenty of open diagonals, open files. And well, you know, this extra white pawn on the queen side, it's doubled very hard for white to make something of it and uh, 
After knight f3, well, we're in a, into a correspondence game here, and now Stockfish's novelty is h6. Why not? And uh, yeah, I mean, basically, black has got uh, pretty typical compensation for the pawn. Maybe not um, worth 100% of the pawn, but uh, yeah, quite a bit uh, of it. And uh, well, we saw, you know, again, a similar position in uh, in the recent uh, Carlson against Nepomniachtchi uh, uh, World Championship match. And again, Jan had, you know, just... Uh, very big difficulties uh, making anything. In fact, uh, you know, Jan was even a little bit worse, I think, in uh, in his game. So, um, yeah, basically looks like a, a pretty decent solution for uh, for Black there. So there we are. Um, oh, there's just one more thing maybe uh, interesting to point out. Is I mentioned, uh, you know, that uh, after Castle's Knight takes c4, that at slightly lower depths, 70,000 million nodes, that uh, Stockfish was happy to play the Berlin ending. Um, so maybe just um, worth looking at what Stockfish actually wanted to do. I mean, it is actually incredible to compare the sophistication of what Stockfish is finding here uh, compared to uh, Stockfish 8 against Alpha Zero games, you know, where uh, uh, Stockfish 8 was just getting absolutely nowhere um, with uh, with White, you know, really not finding any lines at all. I mean, here Stockfish just, uh, just like that, just finds the most uh, critical lines here. Um, g4 so i mean very important lines these you know blacks uh, uh managed to swap off some more pieces and uh yeah you know reduce the cramp position a little bit more but whites you know using that to expand on the king side and uh black's got to be very very sharp on this to make sure that uh, it doesn't end up in trouble um in actual fact we're following a, a shankland wesley so game from uh, saint louis 2021 here but black pretty rigorously trying to swap off all of the king side pawns and um, knight e2, bishop e6, and now knight g3 is uh, Stockfish's novelty. Uh, Shankland went uh, king g2, king f7, knight g3 takes, but this was not very much for uh, for white. Uh, nor is Stockfish's either. Um, here, black takes the, uh, the g5 pawn quickly. c7 is always hanging. Um, you know, white can try and uh, claim that this dark squared bishop is better than the light squared bishop restrict it with uh, with c4 as well but black just plays carefully b5 stopping white from playing uh, c4 a4 a5 takes rook h3 we've got ideas like you know bishop d5 rook coming into g8 as well you know black's got no problems in this position black will probably end up losing you know one pawn but it's opposite colored bishop so no real problems there so you know uh, nothing um, amazing there in the end, but uh, yeah, you know, interesting to see the sophistication of what uh, you know Stockfish can just discover by analysing now compared to um, well, you know, the pretty basic stuff that Stockfish Eight came up with uh, well four years ago uh, um, already. You know, so uh, very very interesting there. All right, well, in the next video, we are going to be having a look at um, some other E4 main lines. That's going to be the French one E6 and the Karakhan 1c6 as well, and some interesting stuff and unusual stuff in there too. Thanks for watching.